Good evening. Welcome to Golden Speakers. I'm Emory Styron, Vice President of Education, filling in for President Dennis Gomez, who's away tonight. We are the famous Golden Speakers Toastmasters Club, the envy of District 19, uh, the cream de la cream of Area Z, and uh, we meet here every Tuesday night at the end of the ice cream aisle in the High V. Uh, club room. The mission of the club is to provide a mutually supportive and positive learning environment in which every member has the opportunity to develop oral communication and leadership skills, which in turn foster self-confidence and personal growth. Um, we'd like to welcome our new members, uh, Dee and Janet here tonight, and I see we have a guest. How you doing? Would you want to stand up and just introduce yourself and tell uh, us why you're here? My name is Dan Gorman and um, I'm here to see Shipley do a presentation about sauerkraut because um, I run a sauerkraut company and he's a big part of it. Oh. Okay, oh. welcome. Right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to turn the meeting over to our Thank Toastmaster, you. our Master of Ceremonies for tonight, Will Burns. <laughs> Welcome guests, viewers at home, and Toastmasters to another meeting here Tuesday in the High Beat Club Room. Diving right in here, we're going to hear first from our role players, starting with our timer, Peter Armstrong. Mr. Toastmaster, honored members and guests, I'm the timer for this evening, and for the uh, various speeches, I will be turning on the green, yellow, and red lights for Mr. Shipley's presentation. Those times will be green, eight, eight minutes, yellow, 11 minutes, and red, 12 minutes. All speakers have 30 seconds after the red light goes on before they will be disqualified from being the best speaker in their category. Uh, for table topics, the times are green, one minute, yellow, one minute, 30 seconds, and red, two minutes. For going back into the regular scheduled speakers, um, for a standard speech, uh, Hudaifa will use five, six, and seven minutes, respectively. At the end of the uh, meeting, I will give a report. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. <laughs> Next up, we have our grammarian, Ryan Prana Miller. Ryan, what's your job? All right, I will be keeping track of any unusually uh, clever or noteworthy language, anything that sticks out as uh, colorful or uh, just uh, unusual. So altruistic is the word of the day, showing a disinterested and selfless concern for wealth, I'm sorry, for the wellness of other humans, uh, synonym is kind, and um, even though she didn't know the man who was homeless, she showed altruism by fill in the blank. So yeah, that's it, altruism, and I will be uh, awarding members with uh, the most prestigious award at the end of the meeting, if you use the word of the day the most. That's all I have to say. And I'll give a report at the end of the meeting for that, uh, for the grammarian uh, report. Thanks. Thank you, Connor. All right. All right. As a point of information, if somebody does an altruistic act during the meeting, do they get extra credit, or how does that work there? I think you just get like a... We can work this out, but we might get like a, a week off of speaking or roles. I want to encourage speaking. Okay. I'm not going to be getting the chance to come up here. Yeah, so extra roles. Extra roles. Okay. If you use the word of the day the most, you get an extra role the following meeting. All right. All right. Sounds good. Great. Uh, Next, we have our art counter. Janet, please tell us what you're going to be. Oh, what you're going to be doing. 
down the names of the speakers and counting how many times they say uh, um, you know, etc. Sounds good. And we look forward to hearing your report uh, later on in the meeting. Thank you. Okay, our general evaluator tonight will be the illustrious Dan Craig. We'll hear from him later on. He is also our tireless, altruistic videographer. He, and he does a great job with that as well. Finally, our greeter joke master is Miranda Goddard. But now let's move into the, the prepared speeches. So now it is my distinct pleasure to call up Jeff Shipley's evaluator, who will be Gene Simonton Craig. Gene, come on up here. One housekeeping detail before we start. I had my badge in my hand and it's now gone. It's got little, it's got a couple of little badges on it. If anyone finds it, just, you know, run it my way. It's here somewhere. Okay. What does it look like? It looks, looks like, like all these other badges, but it's got a couple little, yeah, a couple little clippy things on it. I don't have it on, do I? No, I don't. It's on your forehead. It's on my forehead. All right. Very good. Jeff Shipley tonight is going to be working from an advanced communications manual titled Persuasive Speaking. He is doing project number one titled The Effective Salesperson. The objectives of his speech are, are to learn a technique for selling an inexpensive item in a, real, in a retail store to recognize a buyer's thought process in making a purchase, to elicit information from a prospective buyer through questions, and to match the buyer's situation with the most appropriate product. There's several pieces to this project, so you'll be running those, great. Jeff resides peacefully in Fairfield with his adorable wiener dog, Pickles. Your talk tonight is on sauerkraut, is that right? I'm, I'm sensing a theme here. Yes. Jeff is pursuing his advanced communication manual to gain valuable persuasive skills. He hopes to enrich the world with delicious and healthful foods. Please happily, warmly welcome Jeff Shipley. Fellow Toastmasters, honored guests, viewers at home, High V is a beautiful place. It's brimming with aisles overflowing of quality goods and services and a helpful smile on every aisle. High V is a flourishing company. It was built by effective salespeople. My project tonight is to explore the sales process, what makes a sale possible, what makes an effective salesperson, and then offer a demonstration and a brief discussion to that end. There's really three things need to exist to make a sale possible. One, there has to be a need or a benefit. The buyer has to gain something, more or less, or else he wouldn't even be shopping, or there'd be no motivation to even have the discussion. Two, there has to be an element of trust that the product and then the salesperson will deliver as promised. For instance, if you're buying a car, you want to know the car is going to work, and you have to trust the salesperson. Has anyone ever met a salesperson they didn't like? <laughs> Chances are you didn't trust that person, and almost certainly you didn't buy from them. So those are pretty straightforward. This last one is a little more interesting, but much more important. It is, it's got to be a win-win. Both parties have to win. It has to be a mutually beneficial exchange the perceived benefit has to be greater than the purchase price. For instance, I bought a caribou coffee. I valued the coffee more than I valued the $3.42. Conversely, caribou valued the $3.42 more than they valued the coffee. That's why they gave it to me. We both won. Due to that transaction, the world is a richer place. A little bit of prosperity was created because it was a win-win. Our interests were aligned and we freely exchanged to both of our mutual benefits. 
All right, now let's talk about effective salespeople. What makes an effective salesperson? They're going to be likable, and they've got to trust them, trustworthiness. What does that really mean? Well, they're going to be focused on the buyer. They're going to be listening. They're going to be sincere. They're going to be genuine. They're probably going to be courteous. And a good listener, they're going to ask the right questions. They're going to communicate competently, clearly, to have that clarity, which is going to radiate that credibility that they're a trustworthy person, they're an expert, they can actually help you, they know what they're talking about. It's going to be asking the right questions. Think about the last thing you bought. Why did you buy it? What did you like about it? What didn't you like about it but still bought anyway? Was it, is it something you are going to routinely purchase again and again, or is it a purchase that's going to sustain you for a while? Why did you buy one brand and not the other? Why did I buy from Caribou when I could have got a cheaper coffee from Casey's? Why do I buy Fiji water when water's free from the tap? Why, why, why? That's what you have to know. That's what the salesperson is going to know, because you have to understand the whys to understand why do buyers make the decisions. Why do they make the decisions that they do? Companies will spend millions of dollars annually just trying to find out how consumers make their decision. So that's what an effective salesperson is going to be asking you about. He's going to be asking, he's going to find the customer's why. Why are they talking to you in the first place? Now this could be important because perhaps you're selling a product, the customer doesn't even know they need it yet. So now you're really going to have to investigate and build value. So remember I said before, the, the value has to be greater than the purchase price or else be, it has to be no reason to do anything. My $3.42 can't be equal to the coffee. It has to be greater than. It has to be greater than value, or else there's no motivation to act. So the salesperson is going to effectively build and demonstrate value. And then once that's been done effectively, so the scale is tipped, as in greater value, greater than purchase price, then the salesperson is going to ask for the close, ask for a commitment. Once the value has been demonstrated and built, then let's have a deal. Let's do it. Let's do some business, baby. And if, if, if the value's been built and if the salesperson's trustworthy, that's not going to be all that difficult. In fact, it could just be an extension of asking the right questions. Can you afford this product? Does this product and its features help you? Am I the type of guy you want to do business with? All right, let's, let's have 10% down, let's do it. Ask for the close. That could be a tricky part. There's fear involved, it's sometimes some anxiety, so there's books written about this subject, but that's for another speech. <laughs> So that's kind of the long and short summary of what the sales process entails, and uh, those principles apply to both larger and smaller purchases. Now I'm going to offer a demonstration on a real work product with a real work world person, and we'll see if I can effectively employ these and make a sale. So I'm going to invite to the stage Will Burns. Big red hand for Will Burns, everybody. Great seeing you. Thank you. Glad to be here. Man, it's been a while since we since we last shared a meal together, but I remember you being a uh, someone who appreciates organic, local, handcrafted, quality gourmet foods. Is that correct? Yeah, I think that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Well, great. Cause it's been my lifelong <coughs> dream to be a purveyor purveyor of healthful and delicious foods. And this local Fairfield company, the Bubbling Brine Brothers, I want to introduce you to them. Um, so these are fermented vegetables, also known as like sauerkrauts or kimchi. I like calling them sauerkraut. Are you familiar with sauerkraut? Just a little bit here, you know. I'm not, now, is it true that uh, you said sauerkraut and kimchi, they're the same, they're comparable? Well, or? it's, it's the idea, uh, it's, uh, you're, you're fermenting vegetables. Okay. So right. the kimchi would be more of the Asian variation or the Korean variation. Sauerkraut is a European thing. This is a very unique um, product because it really brings the best of the whole entire world together into one 12-ounce jar. So when's the last time you ate sauerkraut? <laughs> you know, I think it's been a little while. Well, I mean, I you know, I was thinking that I had it recently, but I actually was thinking of uh, of coleslaw. So I'm oh, totally so it's been a while. So you're not really a regular coleslaw eater, huh? I guess. Well, I, you know, not really. Actually. I'm concerned more with the. Uh, How many servings of vegetables do you get a day? I try to eat. eat Would it be much. healthier if it was more? I think that's probably true. So this is, um, we got a couple real great products here. This is the Vedic Kraut. Okay. And, you know, it is tangy, but what makes this special is it's got turmeric. You familiar with turmeric? Yeah. Yeah, it's a very healthful spice, has anti-aging, even some anti-cancer properties. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, the really cool thing about crop, before I get any further, is making sure we're, this jar is alive. There's living organisms in here that are going to nourish you from the inside out. Mm -hmm. And recent scientific discoveries seem to indicate that the healthier and more living the food you eat and that nourishes and sustains your guts, that's going to help overall physical and mental health. Now, my claims have not been evaluated by the American Medical Association, but I'm pretty darn sure. And well, hold on here. I mean, it, it's fermenting. I mean, isn't that like a form of, of decay? I mean, is, is it actually no, healthy to eat? No, uh, not only is it healthy, well, it's delicious. And okay. yeah, there's so many ways to eat. A lot of folks just like to put it with a sausage or eggs. I eat it straight out of the jar. My mom doesn't really like the flavor, so what I tell her is just, you know, fry it up, cook it up, okay. and that'll, um, it'll still be healthy, it's still good vegetable for you, but it's perhaps easier on, on a less sophisticated palate. Not saying your palate is less sophisticated, but, um, yeah, so it's really healthy, it's, okay. it's, and it's vegetables, it's, you know, zero carbs, all local, organic, it's a local business. I think it's delicious. You haven't tried any of these products before. I have not. I haven't. Which one would you recommend for somebody starting out here? Well, do you like it spicy? Now, I do for most people, but my wife's a Texan and she really likes spicy food. So I always have to be careful about, about spice. Well, this is, uh, this is this purple crowd, or also known as spicy perp. It's got okay. the garlic in there, so it's got that garlic bite. Okay. Garlic's also a very healthful um, you know, bulb type thing. Supposedly it's got anti, uh, you know, what are they? People say garlic's good for you, you know. They say that. <laughs> well, is it true or did yeah, or I think so. say it? I mean, well, it doesn't matter if it's true or not. What matters is it tastes good. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that I can assure you. Um, yeah, so, so these retail for $7.99. I think each one has very potent, helpful uh, properties. And given the healthcare crisis in this country, you know what they say that um, they say an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure? Mm -hmm. So given that there's 28 ounces in a pound, I can calculate that this jar of crowd here represents $223.72 of saved medical expenses down the road is uh, how, how I calculate that. So it's really yeah. not only an investment in your, in your meal, in your lunch time, in your dinner, but it's a meal in, in these long-term dividends for a healthier, healthier, happier you. Well, it sounds like more of a statement about the spiraling healthcare costs in, in this country. Well, but, that, that's a good point, Will. You know, we money. agree but, on that. But, um, you know, I can get a lot of eggs for, you know, seven ninety nine. That's how much, I mean, how long would this last me? Oh, this, this gets better with age. It's like a okay. fine line. Okay. Like this is a this is a 2017 jar. Okay. So it's only getting better with age. And so yeah, like, I mean, ex worst, worst comes to worst, you know, there's another catastrophe, zombie apocalypse. I can actually store this stuff. Is that right? It'll absolutely. Yeah, oh, that's okay. that's uh, uh, a a underspoken feature. We don't mention that enough because we like to focus on the positive of of, the, of everything working out okay. Uh -huh. But uh, yeah, for your for for the or you know, say hurricane, you know, like like or. Oh, Snowstorm, right. I can't go to the store. This will enable you not shelf, only to survive, it. but to thrive in a crisis because it'll okay. be nourished. Not only you're nourishing, you're nourishing all the good guys that exist in your gut. And like, for example, so when I'm home for Christmas, all my family got a stomach flu. Mm -hmm. I did not. Is it possible to overindulge with this and have too much and cause like some, some stomach dis distress? Because it seems like you might be doing a lot down there. Well, so that's a good thing is um, I, I think 99 out of 100 doctors agree that vegetables are pretty darn good for you. And it's uh, very tough to overdose on vegetables. So there's no sugar in here. Okay. And it's all very easily digestible. And I think your stomach's going to love it. Okay. And um, yeah. Actually, there is another good question here. Um, my uh, mother-in-law, she's she's definitely doing this whole low, low, low Oh, low, yeah. Low I would low love coffee. to talk to her. Yeah. Okay. But, th but this is something that would basically be able to go with like a, like a paleo. A low oh, carb definitely. Carb. And not only that, is that, some people have like frustration on these diets when they're more restrictive. And so this really helps you pack in the flavor to really make uh, your dining experience more enjoyable. Hmm. Okay. And so yeah, each of these register for $7.99 or the retail for $7.99. And um, you know, we'll handle shipment delivery and um, take all major credit cards. So how many can I put you down for? You know, that's a pretty, it's uh, a, a lot here. All at once, I probably want to want to try some. Would you be able to give out some samples? Well, what I can do is because sauerkraut is so valuable, mm -hmm. um, I would be willing to purchase it back from you in the instance that you did not enjoy it. That's a pretty solid. Yeah, I got a money back guarantee. Okay, that's pretty solid. And guarantee. given the check I just wrote you, you know I'm good for it. Well, I haven't actually cashed the check yet, Jeff, <laughs> so I don't know yet. But if I was to cash the check and realize it went through, then yes, I could probably trust you. I do have the overdraft protection in my U.S. bank account, so, so that's, that's, uh, that's pending good. financial catastrophe. Okay. Good hands. Let me ask you this question: Which one 
You, you mentioned several different ones here. This one's kind of spicy. This one has a little bit of turmeric. Yeah, I didn't mention the curtido, which is actually our best seller. This would be okay. a really good one because it has the perfect combination of spice and savory. It's actually an El Salvadoran uh, fermented food blend. So again, I've mentioned now we just get the best that world culture has to offer and put it in this 12-ounce jar. And so curtido is real popular. I think you'd really enjoy that one. Mm -hmm. And I think with Valentine's Day coming up, if you want to put a smile on your wife's face. <laughs> Okay, that's that's pretty interesting. Yeah, we also have the the, the uh, for a <laughs> low price of forty nine ninety nine a week, uh, we can give you three jars delivered to your home, and I'll actually get to hang out with you and cook you a meal. So that's a pretty good meal too, good deal too. That's a yeah. That's, that's and we can have this conversation week after week. <laughs> you know, I might want to mix it up a little bit, but but I definitely appreciate seeing you, Jeff. It's always a, always a pleasure yeah. to see you. I think I might have to actually go with the. Uh, you know what? I'll be honest, you have me curious here about this one. You've had a great week at work, Will. I think you yeah. can afford all three. I probably could, but let's start with one and see how, see how I do. Because, you know, again, the system, you know. I, I was it. just reading in the Washington Post about how Dr. Ben Carson said that, uh, you know, a nuclear explosion can wipe out the entire electrical grid and create mm -hmm. that worst-case disaster. You're going to want this in your fridge or in your cellar. But by all three, we, well, you give me a... Say ten percent discount. I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm buying a substantial amount here. You know, I was going to buy one here. I, I definitely want to see you welcome with some sauerkraut. I would be sacrificing out of my commission on the deal, um, but because your health is so important to me, and because I know you're going to be so satisfied with this product, you're going to be a, re a repeat buyer, perhaps again on that weekly subscription plan. Sure. Yeah, let's make a deal. All right, All right fantastic. All right. Was that? Do we do all right? All right. So again, we just live in such a beautiful world, and um, I suggest we all just express our gratitude rightfully and properly, and go down to the fresh food. I think it's aisle three there, and uh, buy as many jars of sauerkraut as you can. They're running low, and they're going to move fast. So I recommend you do it immediately, Mr. Toastmaster. Out of curiosity. Did you, are these from your stock or are these from the Those shelf? are from the shelf, yeah. Okay, well, I will actually purchase this one. All right. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because, again, I am concerned about my health. I am curious. I think you're really going to enjoy it, Will. Yeah, sure. This is the downside of volunteering to be Jeff's guinea pig during a sales pitch. He's a very... I don't know, you just, something about the guy just makes you want to trust him and, and buy things from him, so go figure. Uh, let's take two minutes to evaluate Jeff's speech. Welcome back. And now for our second speech of the evening, it's my pleasure to call Hudaifa, who will be reading the objectives for Fraser's speech. Hudaifa. Okay, tonight we have a speech from our valuable member, Treasurer Jones. He's starting the speaking to inform advanced communication series, and he's starting with the first project, the speech to inform. The objectives of this of his speech for tonight is or are to select a new or and useful information for presentation to the audience and organizing the information for easy understandability and retention and present the information in a way that will help motivate, motivate the audience to learn. <clears throat> His speech is about five to seven minutes. Treasure Jones hails from the lush Green Island in the Caribbean, the nature island of Dominica. The temperature there now is about 78 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> After graduating as a civil engineer from University of the West Indies, worked in that field for about eight years in Dominica. He left this paradise, that paradise, not this. And he came here as a master 
student in computer science in Maharishi University of Management in 1988. Frazier has been in Fairfield since, though at times, like this morning, with the temperature at minus four degrees Fahrenheit, he questions that decision. Tonight, his speech is the most important Toastmaster officer. Please welcome Fraser John for his speech tonight. Tonight, I'll be informing you of one, who is the number, number one Toastmaster officer, and two, why? And three, I'll be also indicating how me, you, in fact, all of us can contribute in making this officer reach his objectives in all friend quest to be better speakers and leaders. Look at the agenda. You see the, you'll see the list of officers up there. Who do you think is the number one? Is it the president? That's what I had thought until about a month ago when I went to officers training. Paul Wood, our area director, carried out this training. He has decades of Toastmaster experience. So, I was surprised of what he said. You were there. I was there. It was a great morning. I thought, I thought all But who did he say what he most important? He said that the most important officer is the, uh, was, the was the president. It wasn't the treasurer. It wasn't the um, secretary. Hey, <laughs> who does that leave? VP of membership. No, he actually said it was the sergeant at arms. Sergeant of arms. Yeah, that's right. I do it. I was dumbfounded yeah, because right. I chose sergeant at arms because I thought it was the least important <laughs> officer. <laughs> Just being in charge of the physical, the physical inventory, you know, setting up things. You know, dealing with inanimate things. But Paul, he turned everything upside down for me. He said, the sergeant at arm is the number one officer because he creates an environment which is pleasing, comfortable, so that all we members can perform smoothly and meet goals. 
from the first impression when a member walked through the door to the last impression when the wa member walked out. That officer, the sergeant at arms, have to maintain that ambience. Talking about first impressions, never, never, never underestimate first impression. Two researchers, one from Carnegie Mellon and two from Turkish universities, they did a simple experiment. They showed portrait styles, photo, photos to some test subjects, and they showed the, the photos had sometimes one, the person was smiling, and the other, they had a neutral face. Each test the subject was only shown one photo. A month later, they brought the test subject and the, oh, sorry. After they saw the photo, they wrote down their impression in our, our questionnaire. Well, so a month later, they brought the test subjects and they presented the photo together. The test subject had no idea who the person was. I mean, you just see a photo of one. They had face-to-face -face activity for about 20 minutes. After that, they, they wrote the impression. The results were virtually identical. That's the power of first impression on your subconscious. So. When a member of guests walks through that door, the, the sergeant at arms should have a greeter there to warmly greet the, the member of guests. If it's a guest, he, should, he or she should direct the guest to a seat next to a member so that the member could answer the guest questions and make the guest feel at home. And the guest, the chairs, the chairs should be arranged so that you have easy, you can exit, enter and exit easily with minimum disruption. And, or banners should be arranged pleasingly with, especially for TV audience who think if it is lopsided, it will look very bad to them. So, in concluding, the Sergeant at Arms set up the whole ambience within which we, the members, can perform as smoothly as possible and meet your goals of being effective speakers and leaders. Mr. Toastmaster. Oh, oh, sir. Oh, sir. Just uh, call me up when you're ready. Okay, yeah. And from my side, I will turn it to Will, Mr. Will, our postmaster. Thank you. Remember that you're turning over the, the ship here. So when you're up here, just whatever you got to do to get somebody up here if it's not supposed to be you. Okay, take two minutes. Please buy a wait. Raise your speech. We'll be going into our our evaluation section here in just a minute. But first, Mr. Timer, did both of our speakers qualify tonight? Mr. Toastmaster, I regret to say that either one of our speakers qualified. The first speaker asked for the close at the 11 minute mark, but uh, 
it took until 13 <laughs> minutes and change to actually close the sale. I guess in some ways I should feel good that I'm sort of a tough customer <laughs> in that sense, but thank you. That is unfortunate. So we can save on voting. If there's a silver lining, that's that's it. And now it's my pleasure to call up our general evaluator, Dan Craig, to run this part of the meeting. I can watch your I can do the camera. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, honored guest, viewers at home. Now it's the section of the meeting where we hear the evaluations. The purpose of evaluation is for our speakers to get feedback, positive feedback to tell them what they did well, and also suggestions that might help them improve in the future. I'm going to call up the first evaluator for the evening. That's going to be Gene Simonton Craig, who's going to evaluate Jeff Shipley. Well, fellow Toastmasters, guests, you had a guest, your friend, viewers at home, and particularly Jeff. Jeff is an experienced Toastmaster, very glib and able to communicate effectively. I thought he did a great job on this project, but I want to focus in on some things that I felt he could do better, and particularly if he's selling sauerkraut in the future or anything else that he's putting his attention on. Because this is a very important project for sales. How well did the speaker explain the persuasive process used in retail sales of expensive items? The project gives a number of points, a number of different uh, ways to go about this. Jeff did meet many of those points and describe them well. In my opinion, he didn't quite get as much about the buyer's need and solution to those needs explained which I think played out later in his role play. So that's the, one of the overarching themes there that I'm going to mention for suggestions. Was the speaker able to build rapport with the buyer? Yes, although it was obvious that Will was being treated as an already, as an already friend. He wasn't a stranger. So it could be the dynamic would be different if you did not know the person in terms of having to build that rapport from that point. How effective were the questions the speaker asked? How did the speaker use follow-up questions to elicit more information? So this again would be my suggestion, would be that I didn't see that the buyer's need was firmly established in the buyer's mind before the product was presented. Uh, that's, that's really key. He almost had an angle when Will, there was this talk about difficulty meeting your daily vegetable requirement. But he didn't go there with that. So you're having trouble with meeting your you know. So Will has to experience a need that needs a solution for the whole sale process, sale process to work. What did the speaker do to show attentiveness and concern for the buyer? He listened well. I'm going to make a suggestion. It's subtle, but you want, if there, an objection is raised, like Will said, why can't I buy lots of eggs for the price you're asking me to pay for the sauerkraut? Address the objection, repeat it, and then give a response. So I didn't hear that quite happen as well. Jeff was having fun, and he was having fun, but you know, I'm, I'm looking at it, this is a serious business. <laughs> uh, so the buyer needs to understand that he has a need. How knowledgeable was he? Jeff was very knowledgeable. He was talking ingredients and, you know, he had studies and, you know, so and all of this that why you should have sauerkraut. I'm going to go over, I'm sure. Was the, uh, was the buyer, was the speaker friendly and courteous? Again, he was addressing a friend already. They'd actually dined together before, so it was a little different. I would have liked to see that role play be with a stranger. Will is heading in that direction as a strange guy. No, I'm just kidding. But, all right, so. Uh, how, how, effective, how effective were the uh, speaker's efforts to obtain commitment? I felt he went for the close, again, quickly, too quickly, given 
the buyer's lack of acknowledgement that he had a need. And in fact, the buyer is trying to get a, almost get away. And <laughs> Jeff was not, so it's, again, I felt the whole range needed to go much more on the buyer to really, and then it sells itself. Mm, uh, so that's it. Those are my suggestions for how you can improve it. Uh, but I really liked how knowledgeable, knowledgeable he was about sauerkraut. I might try it myself. Sauerkraut has been like at the bottom of my list. So thank you very much. Now it's time for our second evaluator. That's going to be Hudaipa, who's going to evaluate Fraser. Welcome back. I'm going to first my fellow Toastmasters and guests. He left. OK, <laughs> you are at home. I'm going to follow the manual in order to evaluate his speech. Again, I would like to remind you about the objectives, is to select <clears throat> new and useful information for presentation to the audience, organize the information for easy understandability and retention, and present the information in a way that will help motivate the audience to learn. What made his speech interesting? I think speaking about a topic related to Toastmaster and one of the, for me, unknown role, and maybe for many people also. Also, the point of showing that the president role may not be the most important role how effectively, effectively the, did the speech opening capture and hold your attention? His opening, when he first talked about a speech he has, or a class he has attended last month, and when he shown the, the role before he talked about it's his role. How comfortable and familiar did the speaker appear to be with his material? It's clear he was prepared, I mean the speech, he used the statistics, he used an expert opinion, and also he used the visual aid, I think, picture. What was the organizational structure of his speech? I think it's function. He has uh, explained the roles, steps, or functions. How did the speaker encourage the audience to learn? I think two points. First thing is when he communicated directly with the audience and asked one of them. And the second thing, when he talked about love your, what you work or what you do to do what you love. How effectively, effectively did the speaker relate new information to the common experience and knowledge of the audience? Yeah, when he talked about his role, I thought that I didn't know that it, part of his role when I thought that's just because he comes early every time. What could the speaker have done to make the talk more effective? I think if he just make points, clear points, three points, or not just statements or paragraphs. And if he use the stage with these points, will be more clear for everyone. And finally, what would you say is the speaker's strongest assist in, in informative speaking. I think that his introduction about how, how interested is his role, Mr. General Evaluator. Now, 
Now we're going to move on to our third phase of the meeting, which is table topics. It's the chance for all of us to come up, be given a subject that we haven't heard before, and speak for one to two minutes extemporaneously. It's another good training for a way of speaking. And we're going to invite Gene Simington Craig back up to be our table topics master. I noticed that the topic tonight was fact or fiction. I had already decided that I wanted to use the table topics questions that I was a table topics master for on Saturday at Fort Madison. I thought, great, I have all these topics all ready to go. And then I thought, I don't know if they're going to match the topic of the meeting, but it kind of does. Okay, you'll see. I'm going to try to sell it. I'm going to sell it. I may need Jeff's help. The meeting topic is fact or fiction. My questions are about love, which can be fact or fiction, depending on what your experience is and what you're doing. OK. okay everybody's looking a little shell-shocked. But honestly, this is going to be good. Table topics is impromptu speaking. You don't know what I'm going to ask. You know it's going to be interesting. You have. One minute, which will be green, and then if you make it to green and you're sweating profusely, you want to sit down, you're good. You can sit down at green. Yellow, uh, yellow will be at one and a half minutes, and red will be at two, and you do need to wrap it up with, within 30 seconds after that red light. Okay. So I've got questions here. Janet, is that you raising your hand? Can you tell? Yeah. <laughs> you know, people raise their hands different ways. Some do head things. I'm, I'm good at picking it out. So why don't you come on up? So to ask a question? I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. I'm going to ask, yay, Janet. <laughs> you remember. OK, I know my hand is cold. I know. We could just stand here. You could talk, and I'll hold yeah. hands. All right, great. Cool me off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> OK, so I'm just going to give you a question. And you have up to 30 seconds to organize it mm -hmm. in your mind. You don't have to blurt right out. You have to try to I was it. having a question to you, though. That doesn't matter. I didn't know what you're saying the table topic is. Yeah. So this is love. This is what it, this is fact what, or fiction or what? Well, the theme is going to be love. It's going okay. to be questions on love. And the exercise is to practice getting a, a topic or a question that you have you don't know in advance, because that's oh. what happens in life all the time. Okay. People ask you something. Uh -huh. And then come up with an answer that's okay. coherent. Okay, if you faint and we need to take you back, we'll You'll do that. Catch me. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so keep an eye on the lights. Oh, All right, okay. so let me, I'm just going to let you pick a number from one to seven. Four. Okay. All right. What is a very important characteristic that you want someone to have in order for you to love that person? Much. Okay. Okay. Hello, Toastmasters. I'd like to talk about the most important characteristic for someone for me to love. They would have to be a compassionate person and I'm doubting that they really have to be aware. They don't have to be aware. It would be nice, but could let that slide. Uh, let's see. It's not really that difficult because everybody has great characteristics and is so unique that it's easy to love them for who they are and what they're bringing forth to the table. It's always interesting and completely amazing and varied. So I actually don't find it that difficult to find something to love in a person, even if they are an annoying person. <laughs> they still have good qualities and aspects that I can see. So thank you very much. Oh, yes, I got to Thank you. Yeah, perfect. Okay. All right, first table topics. Woo! Woo! Okay, very good. 
Very good. All righty. Who would like to come up next? D. All right, D, don't, don't try to come here. This is the dead zone for the camera. So here we go. Oh, yeah, it's always going to be different because okay. right. you've heard the last one. Yeah. Okay. That would be too much preparation. Okay. Okay. So good. Thank you for coming up. Sure. Now, so you get to pick uh, between one to seven, but not four. Five. How has your idea of love changed from when you were younger to who you are now? Well, I guess when wait, I wait, wait, Oh, okay. I just know before you have, you do oh, have I, up to 30 seconds to think a little bit before you take off. Because a lot of times people feel like they just have to spit something out or they look like they're stupid or something. Right. And that's not how it works, okay? okay. So I'm just giving, I know D, so I'm just giving them a little extra, you know, break there. Okay, Thank so there you, yeah, you yeah. go. Do you remember the question? What what is say it again? Okay, good. See, that's what happens. Yeah, I know. I forgot. So no, <laughs> love. Here we go. How has your idea of love changed right, right, from right. when you were younger to who you are now? Take it away. <laughs> well, I remember when I was a little child. We always had ca cats and dogs. We had two cats and two dogs. We had indoor dogs, outdoor dogs, indoor cats, outdoor cats. And so uh, we had a pet dachshund as a, as a child, little wiener dog. Everybody knows what a wiener dog is? Yeah. Uh, his name was Helga, by the way. We named it after, you know, where wiener dogs or dachshunds come from. <laughs> so the dog always slept in bed with me, right? How many people have had dogs that sleep in bed with you, right? Um, and the, one of the things that was nice about the dog was he'd always keep my feet warm. And... Um, the dog um, would just be nuts and crazy all the time, you know, running around. You know how wiener dogs are. The one thing we did with our dog was taught it. How many people have had a wiener dog or a yeah. dachshund? Yeah, yeah. Do you ever have your dog to set up and go like this on its right? So, you know, we'd hold out food for it. And it would grab the food and bring it back. Um, and when I was in high school, my... Uh, high school graduation, actually, um, I was up all night. How many people were up all night in your high school graduation? <laughs> How many people were drunk, <laughs> right? Right, so my, my best friend who lived across the street didn't know that I slept with my dog. So it's like uh, probably maybe 2 o'clock in the afternoon, because I didn't go to bed till 4 or 5 in the morning. So they came over there, woke me up, and there's this dog in bed with me. So, you know, they thought I was a little bit crazy or weird about that. Um, unfortunately, uh, how many people had wiener dogs? Yeah. So we would always teach the dog to sit up on its hind end like this and beg for food. And what happened, you should, if you ever get a, another dachshund or a wiener dog, don't ever do that to them because it really hurts their back. And so, unfortunately, when the dog got older, it had just to crawl around on two legs and drag its rear end behind you, and I really felt bad about that. Time. Good. Did you good? Good. 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 You, you did. You got the red right okay. right. well, I ran out of things to say. I, I know. Stopped. Well, you, there's some real wiener dog fans in this. Yes. I think we're out of time. Are we out of time? No. Not yet. Not yet. Well, all right. So, what? When are we supposed to be done with? Uh, About ten minutes. Ten minutes. Well, let's see. And we're supposed about to be done. Eight forty-one. I think we are out of time. Are we out of time? Yeah, we're out of time. Right yeah, okay. Okay. So the reason, I'll just say the reason for love is, you know, we do have Valentine's Day coming in a couple of weeks, so it is sort of a seasonal thing. All right. So we had, yes, Dan? You're going to evaluate, introduce the evaluator? Yeah, but first I'm going to vote. That's Dan yeah, keeping me on my toes. That's Valentine's Day. Yeah. So we had uh, we had Janet and we had D. Is that it? Oh my gosh! So we're gonna have to have a like face off. And so Peter did our both speakers qualified. Both speakers qualified. Okay. So we have a contest here. So go ahead and vote on your ballot as to which one you uh, liked. 
All right, well, thank you very much. Uh, two new folks coming up and stretching their muscles a little bit up here. And now I'd like to call up our Table Topics evaluator, Veda Royale. Thank you, Janet. Uh, Madam General Evaluator, fellow Toastmasters, guests that have left, and viewers at home. Our, I will give a very brief evaluation of our Table Topics speeches tonight. We had two new, two new and excellent Table topic speakers, considering that they are brand new at this they did a wonderful job, both of them. They, most importantly, did not look weird. <laughs> they did not do strange things. They gave us an honest and forthright op opinion, and they did a great job overall. Just to give specific comments, Janet's speech was very brief and just to be aware of your hands in your pockets but other than that it was a great speech. D had a very entertaining speech. He had very advanced uh, characteristics. He did a lot of great vocal variety, a lot of great gestures. It was really entertaining and for the number one time you've done it, I don't think I could give any uh, criticism of that. Mabel, any criticism of that, Madam General Evaluator? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's easy to mix this up. It is? <laughs> At this time, we have the opportunity to vote for the best evaluator. Mr. Timer, could you tell us which of our evaluators qualified? Um, does it qualify if the evaluator is under Timer? Huh? You can be 30 seconds under. So you can be 1 minute 30. Right. One of our evaluators, our evaluators, I should say, gave very let me say, detailed and comprehensive evaluations. And as a result, only one of them was able to. All right. And that was made up. Okay. We don't need to vote. I suspect I know who's going to be the winner. We'll hold that for later. At this time, it's time for our reports from our REL players. First, we're going to get the official report from the timer. Peter, please give us your report of the times. Mr. Evaluator, do you want all of the times? Or, or just, just the name and the time. Okay. Jeff Shipley, 1344 into a 12 minute speech. Hudaifa, 755. Janet, 1 minute, 7 seconds. And D, 2 minutes, 11 seconds. Uh, evaluators, Gene Symington Craig, 4 minutes and 8 seconds. Hudaifa, 3 minutes, 55 seconds. And Veda, one minute, 37 seconds. Who was our second speaker? Frazier. Was Frazier, did you have time for Frazier? Frazier. First, first who they was Frazier. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. It was, yeah, you're right. It was Frazier. Oh, okay. Dive was going. Did I give a speech? Dive thought. He didn't speak and evaluate. So. All right. We need another report. I'm going to ask Prana to give the grammarians report. Oh, shit. I Thanks, Dan. All right. The, uh, the first speaker was Jean, and she mentioned that there was kind of a simile with puppies and wiener dogs and sauerkraut. That was pretty good. Uh, Jeff. You have to trust the salesman and product, and it has to be quality. Um, and then you demonstrated that you were trusted and sold a, a quality product. So uh, you 
you're a man of your word. And um, let's see, Frazier. I thought it was the least important role, but Paul Wood turned everything upside down by uh, saying that it was the most important role. And that's you know about the Sergeant of Arms. And Uh, that was yeah, that was meaningful for me, you know, because Gene was my uh, the person that brought me to this club, and uh, so oh, sorry. The first impression is very important. Uh, Fraser said first impressions, and I feel like that's a critical thing for this club, because that's what gets you hooked to this club. So just that phrase, first impressions, is really meaningful. Um, uh, Gene also said something to Jeff about selling to friends is easier than selling to strangers um, when you're you know with with the sauerkraut business possibly uh, possibly good sales tactics to use in the future and love what you do and work on what you love was uh, I think Udaifa mentioned that so it's, uh, and Will you were the only one so you get an extra prize whatever the prize is yes yes altruistic and uh, that's my report of the day thank you our next role player to give a report is going to be Janet Evertson with the accounts report right. okay with Emery will and Jean I didn't catch anything. I thought they were perfect, but I probably just hadn't focused in yet. No, we were perfect. Oh, okay. <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't. I was really thinking more of the ahs and the ums and the likes and you knows. But I didn't know about the so. I mean, those are part of a sentence. So I'm learning. See, I used it, and I, I feel I will use that a lot. <laughs> okay. So, Jeff, I started paying attention, and he had four uhs, four ums, two likes, five you knows, six so's, four buts, and seven ands. However, they were seamless to me. I, they seemed to fit in. So Will had three uhs, one um, one you know. Hodafa, I didn't notice anything wrong. Frazier? One so, one but, three ands. Will, didn't notice. Jean, one like, four so's, one but, one and. Hadafa, again, perfect. Dan, one and. Jan had two uhs. D had one like, four you knows, two so's. And that's us. Awesome. Our next role player is Joke Master. Is Miranda going to give us a joke? Yeah. Here she is. These jokes are NC-17. Is anyone under 17 years of age? Our audience. Our audience. At this point, please recognize. How does anyone tell a joke on YouTube? They don't. Everyone on YouTube is under 17. Everyone on YouTube is over 17. Everyone on YouTube isn't even on YouTube because they are 17. We're, we're Disney. This is the joke. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No, because think about it. Everyone who is 17, they don't even use YouTube anymore. Why? They've got Pandora. They've got Spotify. Alexa, play my... And that means something to an electronic. Seriously, a song can play the first four beats and an entire crib is rocking. So if I can't tell a joke because it's NC-17, then just look it up on YouTube because there's better jokes than I can give. And that's my joke. <laughs> All right, I'm going to give a brief evaluation of the evaluators for my general evaluator report. Our first evaluator was Jean, who is giving an evaluation of Jeff. And I thought she did a number of things very well, as is her habit. She followed the manual, which is a very strong way for an evaluation to be structured. She had good suggestions for Jeff. A 
about making sure that the the need was firmly established. Just a couple of things that I would suggest for Gene. I thought at a couple of points you were looking down at your notes a little too long. That that loses your audience a bit. <laughs> That's just my personal opinion. <laughs> The other thing is the the length. This is something Gene Simonton Craig, very experienced Sussmaster, really needs to work on, in my personal opinion. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't worry about the times very much. I haven't disqualified for a long time. <laughs> ha. In the uh, in the evaluation she said it, she said, I'm gonna go over, I'm sure. And then she kept going for another hour. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> now, who died for this? This was pretty impressive evaluation. I believe this may have been the first time you evaluated a speech. Woo! And not only that, he didn't get just a, one of the 10 projects from the CC manual. He evaluated an advanced project. That's really quite impressive. Very, very good did a lot of things very well. He reminded us very clearly that of the objectives. He worked through the manual objectives to give feedback to Fraser in his speech. I thought it was very clear. It showed he had listened very well. And he had a very good suggestion about being clear about your three points and, and staging them across, across the front. The main suggestion that I've got for you is just to watch the time. Perhaps somebody has modeled for you something that's not that. <laughs> but strive for that three minutes and 29 seconds. It's very important. And if you were to compete at some point in a contest, and maybe you should, because you're obviously a good evaluator, you really got to hit the time, or it's not even worth showing up. And then finally, we had Veda, who was evaluating our two table topic speakers. I thought it was very cool. Our two brand new members were our two speakers tonight. And Veda gave us a good balance between appreciation and feedback in, in the one case. I think he gave one of the speakers feedback, but uh, the other said you had to say, you did so many things well, and I couldn't think of anything to tell you. And I'm not going to try to come up with a specific suggestion for D, but the suggestion for you is just going to be, if you can't think of a, something that they needed to improve, just try for something they maybe could have done different. Because the point of evaluation suggestions is for somebody to improve, somebody to grow. If you can give them something that they didn't do uh, when they presented, then maybe that will help them in the future. But very nice job. And that is it for me as general evaluator. I'm going to swap places with our Toastmaster, Will Burns. Please welcome up Will. Thank you, Dan. We are racing away here. The hour is getting late. It doesn't mean that we're going to miss our, our awards here. For our best evaluator, Veda. Good job, sir. Best speaker. That was. Nobody. Thought somebody did, but sadly not the case. Sorry to hear that. Um, Best table topics was Janet. Oh. And here's the key that made great bookmarks, by the way. Here, it's on Klein. And now it's our pleasure to call up our president, pro tem, Emery Styron. Thank you, and Will, do not leave. Be right back. A joke? No, we've done that. We've done that. No, uh, Will, as uh, 
vice president of membership had asked me to set aside a little time tonight for him to uh, introduce and induct our new two new members. So as soon as he gets his stuff in order, he'll be back to do that. Thank you. All right, they hear me. Just a slight bit. It'll be all right. We all went through it, I think. It's been a long time for me since I did this. First off, may the most important officer of the meeting please escort our two respected members out of the room, please. Uh, point of order. Yes. I've never been inducted. Good. No, let's get three. It's yeah. So, so long. So long. Anyway, we'll see you soon. Fun. It's fun. Right? It's fun. Yep. You should give free ice cream while we're out. Sauerkraut. You can browse. You can graze. Culture. Yeah. Sauerkraut. Okay. 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 We have before us three members looking to be come members of Golden Speakers Toastmasters. I'll start with. After much excitement and gnashing of teeth, we're all <laughs> happy to welcome you into Golden Speakers. Now, let me tell you here, membership in Toastmasters is a privilege, and the only way to gain the benefits of our program is to actively participate. Do each of you promise to be active members of this club, to attend meetings regularly, and prepare fully for your duties? Do you also I promise? Do. You do. <laughs> Good. I do. Do you also? Is there a Bible handy? <laughs> Next time we'll have a, we'll have a uh, suitable thing to swear on. Do you also promise to fill the other? Uh, do you also? Promise to fill the other points in the Toastmasters' promise, which you should have in your manual. I just don't remember what they are. That's right. You'll see, yeah, you'll see them soon. Okay. Do you all? Do you all basically want to? Do you all promise to be active members of the club, to attend meetings regularly, and prepare fully for your duties? I just need Fraser to call That's me every week to remind yes. me to come. <laughs> it's an important yes, and job. Yes, Beta needs to keep. Keep texting. Keep texting me. me. Okay. We'll see. <laughs> you guys have it all worked out then. That's that's yeah. good. Do you, the members of Golden Speakers Toastmasters, promise to support each of, of these new members as they work through the program? Sure you do. Yes. You, do. Yes. you do. Awesome. Now it's my pleasure to announce each of you installed as members of Golden Speakers Toastmasters. <laughs> and with that, my pleasure to call Gene. Next week's meeting, yes, is, oh, does anybody have a prospective venue for next week's meeting? Um, apparently, you could do Pizza Ranch. Pizza Ranch. So we'll have to yeah, definitely, definitely get the option. You can't come here? Yeah, we'll have to yeah, we'll get the option together. This room is not available. It's going to be in flower yes. mode. <laughs> so just be, be aware that next week we'll not be able to meet here. We'll be, we will... Send out an email, get kind of plans about a, a venue. We have some ideas there from the floor. Yeah. We'll get that worked out, and we will send out an email about where we are meeting next week. That's just next week. Just next week, yep. Not only. The rest of the time, yeah. Only because it's Valentine's yeah, Day. There's This whole room is filled with flowers, and it's beautiful. It moves me to tears when I see it, but it's, it doesn't work for Toshi. Ideal energy. Yeah. Yeah. I'd move to vote ideal energy would be ideal. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll explore that option. I don't want to... Since Dennis isn't here, I really can't speak for him on that. But it was a nice location when we did use it. Okay. Well, I, I might have you. evaluated uh, Troy too harshly. And we may <laughs> he might have second words. Yeah, that's true. Um, well, I will see you all next week. Probably not here, but I will see you somewhere next weekend. And we'll be in touch. We don't know where yet. Not, not where. Not, not yet, but we'll. There was an item in the emails about yeah. people signing cards. And so yes, I have a card to sign at the end here. Oh, yeah, just take it off for a few minutes here. I have a card to sign for, for Troy. And yes, sir. I, I have a our speaking schedule. We are full through February. We have one opening in March. Well, we have more than one opening in March. And... and uh, April and May are now open for booking. You're welcome to see me briefly after the meeting. You're welcome to log on to go, uh, Easy Speak and, and book it that way. Oh, wow. And I will say that, with, that our speakers, both Frazier and Hudaifa, 
logged into Easy Speak, put their speech titles uh, and projects in there, and it was wonderful to see. So, uh, uh, anybody having trouble with Easy Speak, please give me a call. Thank you. Okay, with that, have a good night.